Hi, I'm Michelle. This is my so-called handmade life. I have a blog by the same name, and that is my name on Instagram. On Ravelry, I am Mamatronic. This is a knitting, crochet, crafting, DIY, whatever, YouTube channel. Pretty much just an extension of my blog, which just is mostly like, kind of like a grocery list <laughs> of stuff I've done and things I want to remember. That's kind of what this is here, only I'm trying to have more of a conversation here with you. So please feel free to comment. I respond to your comments as much as I can in the next episode, and I often ask questions. And your answers and your feedback kind of determine where our conversation goes next. So <clears throat> let me show you right now this finished project. Uh, I had it finished last time in episode 53, but I didn't have it blocked so now it is blocked and washed and this was um, Katya Gorbacheva's boxy v-neck vest only I made it a full length sweater and this was sort of meant to be an ode to the 90s kind of project for me 90s early 2000s I I might put in here an inspiration photo or two I just was feeling like making a, a lot of positive ease in a sweater with sort of that sporty v-neck. I considered doing sports stripes in the v-neck, then I changed my mind and I thought I would just wing this pattern. You know, it's a simple v-neck and I wanted a drop sleeve, drop shoulder. So I saw I had Katya's v-neck vest and I liked the ease that she had on her sample and I thought if I had that with sleeves it would be perfect I'm just gonna mindlessly follow her pattern which is something we're gonna talk about in a minute how we mindlessly follow patterns but it was a really good pattern and I'm glad I used it yep I know this is a really okay this was meant to be a kind of a nostalgic knit that made me think of sweaters I wore back in the 90s. And nothing is more 90s than a destroyed ancient Hanes t-shirt sticking out of my sweater. So it's pretty accurate. I have authentic 90s here. Sorry, my uh, camera, I don't have a lot of space in here. Uh, there's dogs and furniture everywhere. But this is the bottom. It, it's not a high-low hem. It's just a straight hem. I have Wool of the Andes Sport as the contrast color for the ribbing. I made a size, I think it was 46 or 46 and a half, I believe, was my um, size. So I'm thinking that's a medium, possibly a large. And I wanted it to have some ease. So it's got about 10 inches of ease and I'm very comfortable in this. To make it a sweater, not a vest, because there was some shoulder decreases here, armhole decreases on the outer edge of the arm. I just didn't do those. I omitted those. I did do the sh short row shaping at the shoulders, which I probably didn't have to do since I was wanting such a casual you know, fit. But I went ahead and did them, and I just kept in mind when I follow the directions that there were extra stitches that I did not decrease on the outer edge of each shoulder. So my, my short rows just didn't go all the way to the edge. I then picked up like maybe 80 stitches all the way around the sleeve for this yarn that I'm using. Um, I believe this pattern calls for DK and I would say this is a sport or DK yarn. It definitely felt like sport weight. It has fulled a little, like bloomed a little with blocking. So it, you know, boucle has a bit of a thick and thin texture. There really aren't any thin spots showing. There's no, no, um, I don't know, sparse areas uh, after I washed and blocked this. It's 30% uh, wool, I believe, wool blend by Textures Yarn. And that is a Fort Worth company. They sell on Etsy. And let me just say, I got this yarn at first to do morning rituals by Andrea Mowry. And it looked like she had a similar yarn in um, weight. But when I knit this up, I just felt like the pattern 
the texture called for in her pattern that the, it just wouldn't be visible enough in this yarn. So I was like, well, I'm just gonna knit a straight sweater without any kind of textural stitch pattern to just enjoy the teddy bear feeling of boucle. So that's why I picked Katya's design. But this was to me a very affordable uh, yarn choice. I knit almost the entire sweater, like I said, maybe a medium or a large with one cone. That was $17. Just this much maybe of one sleeve, like from hair down, was knit with the second cone. So I have a whole other cone. I could knit either a smaller size, something like this, or maybe I could make another vest or I'll probably do accessories. Um, I might make a vest though, or make it as a gift for someone. But I have all that yarn left, and so two cones, $34, that's a really good deal. Uh, the yarn called for for Morning Rituals was beautiful. It's wonderful. It's probably higher uh, content, wool content. But for a budget, I thought <laughs> this is almost $17. Like if you were smaller than me and you knit a smaller size, you could have made it work with one cone. And you really can't beat that for a wool blend sweater that has all the feel. Um, it might be more easy care. I didn't really even check into that because I'm just, I don't, I don't machine wash my sweaters ever. But it probably is uh, easy care. Here's what I did after making this. The, you know, the only part I really had to really focus on was doing changing the shoulder, like the shaping, because I modified the sleeve. And then of course, all the body up to here, super easy. These are very straightforward, uh, neckline decreases, and then the sleeve, you know, I decreased every two inches all the way down, and I have just a little bit of a gather here with the cuff. All very easy for conversation or TV knitting but I needed another TV knitting project, so I cast on for a vest version of this. So now I will just follow Katya's instructions to the letter. This is Ella Ray Eco Tweed. It's very wrinkled, but I don't know if you can see. It is gray with flecks of bright colored, I'm sorry, with brightly colored flecks all in it. and. Uh, I don't know, it's a very happy, it's a neutral, but it's got those little happy colors in it. Uh, I think I'm gonna love it. This looks really small. Um, it is though, I mean, I've been checking my gauge. It does stretch out, you see? I also knit a little bit of extra length just in case I want to widen it, depending on how I want to wear this vest. Uh, if I want to make sure I have lots of ease, I'm planning on stretching it a little, you know, with blocking. So a little length helps when I widen it, it'll stretch up. That probably doesn't sound like good knitter technique, but oh well, I kind of just fiddle with things till I get them how I want them. So that's one side I'm ready for the sleeve decreases. So it's all the way up to here and it's ready to make the sleeve decreases. Um, I'm very excited about how that's turning out. And other than as I work this, I will have to pay attention, but again, the back or the front. Actually, that is the back piece. The front piece, um, same thing, super straightforward, and then there won't be any sleeves, so it's actually gonna be a very quick knit. So those things are done. I've done a bunch of other things, though. We are doing a a knit along or make along, it doesn't have to be knitting. In fact, I'm gonna probably do some crochet in this. It's called the Recycle, Remake, ah, Recycle, Re-Knit, Remake hashtag on Instagram. And basically we're trying to just recycle sweaters we either don't wear, didn't wear, or they didn't fit, or maybe they were thrifted or given to us and or maybe we just didn't do them right. We're either going to take them apart, reuse them, cut them up, felt them, sew them, repurpose them in some way, or maybe some of you have already just re-knit things, like it didn't fit you. Uh, Pat had a Felix sweater, Felix pullover, 
she lost some weight, it didn't fit her right. So she just undid the whole thing and then re-knit it in the right size. And then she added the cutest detail. Um, if you look under the hashtag, recycle, re-knit, remake, you'll see all of these projects I'm talking about. You know that little detail, uh, raglan detail in the Felix sweater? She added it down the side. So she made a cute little ad addition to the sweater as she was re-knitting it. I guess she's so familiar with it and knew what she would like. And it is a really sweet idea to do that. So I showed you last week and the one before, I had some scarf yarn uh, from a bargain bin scarves at the store where my daughter worked when she was in high school and in college. And they were maybe, I'm thinking $3 for a scarf, a uh, dollar for a hat. It was something ridiculous like that. They were very plain, but I could tell they were wool blend. And they had that roving type, kind of like Bernat roving, but they were thicker. And it's difficult to find completely wool, super bulky yarn that is affordable if you want to make something larger than a hat. At least to me, it is. So I picked up a couple of scarves and maybe a hat. I used a gray and an olive color. Those were the colors I got and I unknit them, wound them up, and then I never used them for a while. So I moved with them, I pulled them out and I showed you. And here is what I, my first make was the Durand Cowl by Tara Lynn Morrison of Goodnight Day. So, I think this is just so great. This is just a great accessory. It's got a lot going on. You've got this texture, diagonal stitch texture, and then this fringe. And the coolest part of this was when I finished, when I got the scarf, I saved the fringe. I, like, I pulled out each strand of fringe and it was almost exactly what was needed to make the, and it was the right length, 12 inches for this fringe. So it, it just worked out perfectly. Um, I am going to do blog posts. Everything I show here, I will have blog posts up. I've had company. My sister was visiting me this week, so I didn't post any of the blog posts I planned. I love you, but I love her more. So I visited with her, <laughs> but I am, um, I'm going to have it up a blog post telling you any details about it, but it's a very straightforward pattern and I do recommend this. This doesn't take that much yarn. I don't know my exact yardage, but it's under 200 yards that the actual pattern calls for. Super fun to make. Then I had a little bit left over and I wanted to try and get her Siska toque pattern. And thank you, um, Sharla, for telling me. I was asking you, is it toque, is it toque? People don't say toque here. And my grandmother would say toque for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, Sharla answered my question, it's toque. <laughs> and people who wear them a lot know that. So this is a, a little short of the length it needs to be for the pattern. Now it fits just like it is, but you know, to have a little bit of cool, um, uh, like, you know, little extra room for the beanie. I believe I can get it through blocking though. None of these are blocked yet. I believe that blocking, I can stretch that out. I can actually stuff this with something to hold the shape of a slight cone head, because <laughs> I'm good at that, um, and let it dry that way, and I think I'll be fine. Another technique I wanna try, and I might do a little Instagram, I don't know, video, uh, just showing you how I did it. I did that with a similar yarn, a yarn that I know was completely wool, for one of Tara's patterns, Tara Lynn's patterns. Strathcona, that's what it was, Strathcona. Um, it's a technique where you do not want to felt it, but you do put it in hot water to soak. You don't touch it, you leave it until the water cools. And I've heard that it 
creates, kind of makes a cast in the yarn and it doesn't pill up as bad because this is almost, like I said, a roving type yarn. It's not tightly plied and so it could pill easily. So I'm gonna try that with these. They aren't, prob I cannot believe these would be 100% wool having come from PacSun at the mall. But, so you know, you could wear it just like this if you want it, that's cool. But if I want to have a brim, and it fits, it fits as is, but if I want a little extra space, I will block that in or try to. Either way, it's fine because I, it was, this was basically a dollar and it's really nice. It's a really pretty color. I was really pleased with this, but I didn't stop there because I also had that gray yarn balled up and I thought about this book. Um, it's Plum Dandy Knits and it's Alicia Plummer and Melissa Schwashwari. And this pattern is High Cliff. You can see there. I really liked it when this book came out, but I haven't knit it yet. And so that's what I decided to do with this gray yarn. I had thought initially when I was unwinding it that it was a super bulky, but as I looked at it, it, it wasn't. It's a bulky, but it is a similar roving style yarn. So knitting the swatch, I basically made my, <laughs> I just made, I did a swatch of stockinette but the swatch for the pattern, I just started the hat and it looked like it was the right amount of stitches. Everything was fine width wise, but my row count was off. So I actually did an extra repeat of the pattern to get the length. This is supposed to be about 11 inches from top to bottom. So I feel like I have the same look going and now all I need is to put a pom-pom on it. I had a little yarn left. I could have made a pom-pom out of this, but I decided to try and use a, um, I have some faux fur pom-poms I got a while back, and I think I got a few. Hmm, I think they were on sale at Michael's. Like there's this one, which probably I will use of the color i just think this is sort of a gray and it's a nice uh, color match do you think i have uh this is a brown gray it's not bad it's not bad i'll probably go with the other this one is a loops and thread so i probably got it like probably for a dollar at michael's i have several of them and that's what that means <laughs> when i have several of something I got it at a bargain and uh, and I was going to make a bunch of hats and clearly I did not make them. Here's another one. Now this is buttercream. This might actually be the one. See these two? I don't know which, but anyway, I just need to tie them on. This is, um, I got this from an Etsy store and it comes ready to tie on with the strings, um, this thread or yarn. You can tie it on and then you can untie it and reuse it if you change your mind and you don't wanna use that. I really like that about this one. Um, ooh, I found something else in here I wanna show you guys for like recycling uh, inspiration. When I was digging for that, <laughs> I'm always finding something interesting in the old yarn closet. So with that extra yarn that I did not want to make into a pom-pom, I decided to try one more Tara Lynn pattern that I've looked at, and that is this one, Windsor Turban, or Windsor Headband. This is like from her second volume book from way back. And uh, that was, this has been fun to do. It's been a, um, I'm about ready to, seam it. It's, it's just straightforward. It's a nice little ear warmer for when I'm out walking with the animals or 
I don't know, something like that. Walk, I say with the animals. I don't always walk with my dogs, but I pretty much do every day. And uh, it's nice, it's very soft. I don't know if this is 100% wool, but it is super soft. Ribbed, turban, can't beat it. And I'm not sure, I mean, it's a three needle bind off is what it calls for, but I actually, you're supposed to do the twist in the center. I didn't quite get to the center when I did the twist. And the thing is, I could totally just go ahead and seam it and it would probably stretch out. But I don't know about you, but if I wear something around my head that's even remotely tight, like sunglasses, a hat, a headband, I will get a headache. It's like the slightest compression and my body goes crazy. So uh, I know, I'm not sure, I might just try to Kitchener and not worry about each side being exactly even. So those were really fun things to do and I have four projects pretty much done. Uh, I'm gonna finish the turban or the headband today. So that's four projects for my Recycle, Reknit, Remake. Another thing I'm thinking of because I found the yarn for it, uh, this would be a Reknit. It's not a partial Reknit though. You know, um, Louise did a, a partial Reknit where she took out the top of the yoke of a sweater separated the sleeves from the body and she put in a new sweater yarn attached it all and it up that's similar to what i want to do here but this is my capsule sweater by shannon cook this is such a beautiful such a beautiful sweater these pockets were perfection i don't think i've ever ever made such perfect beautiful pockets before i'm so proud of this sweater but i have failed to wear it because when I made it, I, I knit the sleeves to the right length. I tried it on, it seemed right. But I think even after blocking, it's just a little short. I would like another inch to the sleeves. And it might also be like, I might've gained weight in that time or you know what it is. Uh, I think it's an aging thing. My weight is repositioning itself like upper arms and things. It's actually, I don't, I haven't actually gained weight. It's the same. It's repositioning. That's possibly what's going on here, but I just want another inch of, and I don't really remember how this pattern was done, but it was knit uh, from the top of the sleeve down. So this will be easy enough. I, I'm really good at hiding my woven in ends when I weave them in, Regina. Um, I'm gonna pick out this end. I'm gonna undo it and just try and find my place in the pattern. I may end up having to go back a little to kind of get my bearings. And then I'm gonna extend it because I found this color of Natural Mix by Patton's Classic. That is what this was knit in and they've changed the Natural Mix. It's actually more of a tan um, it's a taupe still, but it's more tan. This has some pearly gray in it. I, I honestly think this is one of the most beautiful, affordable yarn colors there is. I just don't know if you can see that, the color variance here, but this looks, it just looks really special to me. So I found what I was using for it and I had one other ball left. A while back, I got some to go with this to make something and I realized they are not at all matching. This is too old. They had changed the way they dye it. So I can use this to extend my sleeves. So I may do that also because I, I may not have time to wear this. It's already warming up here, but at least it will be ready for next winter. I think this is a very, very, I don't know, high quality knit. I'm so proud of it. And I want to get more use out of it. So you guys have been doing quite a bit of re-knitting and remaking, or you have big plans. Um, Louise fixed that sweater that I said. She also got a yarn bag gifted from a friend that had a half finished tea cozy. So she's going to finish that tea cozy 
unknit a sweater and you are re-knitting a hat, I believe. Um, that's all a lot of projects. That's exciting. I'm excited to see how it goes because she's been posting with the hashtag on Instagram. And if you want to join this, give a, this a uh, make along, please do. There is going to be a giveaway. I'm going to show you the prize later. Um, the way you join it is it has to be something you're currently recycling. It can't be something you did in the past and you just show it now. Something you're currently reusing. And like I said, you can be unknitting something, buy something from a thrift store that you unknit, or take a knit, cut it in pieces. I'm going to show you some plans I have to do that. Um, felt it. Uh, you can reuse the yarn for macrame, for crochet, for whatever. So I'm really hearing some neat ideas from you guys. Danielle had like 400 grams of a green yarn from an old sweater and wanted to make something with it and she was not interested in a shawl so she has chosen to make a scarf kind of of her own design. She's using that um, Japanese Stitches Unraveled uh, book and she's just using different stitch patterns and making a, a kind of a funky looking, um, I don't know, it has almost a quilted look to it. Uh, or patchwork look because you know different like squares of different stitch patterns so I'm really anxious to see how that works out and she may have enough left over to make a hat or some other accessories with it. Pat is I told you about Pat undoing her Felix sweater re-knitting in a different size and even adding some details that was so neat that was a really quick job too what you did Pat. So um, Lucia is, has a stack of like seven knits to rip up and do some recycling with. I, I'm only seeing the befores. I'm really interested to see the your finished things. Like, are you unknitting them all to re-knit? Are you going to use them for sewing projects? Um, show us, tell us more. Hannah has made a, a little short like tie front sweater. It looks like a shrug. And uh, she did that with old sweater yarn and was running, uh, you know, low on yarn. So it became a short sleeve tie front top. It looks kind of like a ballet shrug to me. It's really pretty and it's a light pastel type color. At least it looks that way on Instagram. So I don't know. It looks kind of delicate, very pretty. And then <laughs> made an entire turtle dove sweater that is Spas Trico pattern out of a thrifted shawl. I mean, that must have been a giant shawl from a thrift store. So what would a shawl cost at a thrift store, you guys? Not even $10. She made a turtle dove sweater out of it. That is incredible. I'm not sure when, though, you did that, but or how long did it take, Hannah, to do that? Um the unknitting of a giant massive shawl like that but it might have been really easy it might have been a very simple a lot of stockinette Catherine bought a second hand sweater a while back and has already made a vest and gloves out of it but still has some left and wants to make slippers and i had asked if she would use high quality, more expensive yarn for slippers or if she just feels good doing it because it's thrifted yarn or recycled. Um, and I wanted to show you my Innisquare uh, slippers. She had recommended that if you do something that's not single ply, you're, you're fine for slippers. They'll hold up well. These slippers that I made are the Innisquare uh, slippers by Chelsea Burkampus. Um, I made these a few years ago. I don't wear them every winter. I don't always get cold enough and I have wool socks on all the time, but I have worn them quite a bit. And they are Lopi, and Lopi is kind of like a loosely plied yarn, but you know, it has all that like grip. <laughs> the scales they like hold together and it's that barrier type yarn. So, I mean, there is probably dog hair on these slippers, but they are still in great shape. You can see um, the detail of the cabling gets a little marred by the lopi. I think, I mean, it's not quite as visible. I love the little 
horn buttons. So these worked really well for me. My husband wore his quite a bit, and actually my son borrowed them for a while. Um, I, let me show you a picture of those. Yeah, I called them in a score modified for giants. Um, so I didn't do the little high top on his. So those are his, those are mine. Mine have a little high top. His, they just ended right here. And I made a little, like, maybe it was an I-cord edging that I did. Um, really cute, super warm. No one ever wears those and says they don't keep their feet warm. I, uh, and they actually, they're, they're kind of, they're not felted, but there's a felted look to the bottom at the heel and at the ball of the foot where they get worn more. And uh, it makes me think of the acrylic, really heavy duty acrylic slippers or house shoes my grandmommy used to make us when we were little. And basically we could wear them until we outgrew them because they did last long enough to wear like every winter until we outgrew them and they were always in those little groovy, you know, orange and green and brown 70s colors, yellow. Um, anyway, that was my one foray into slipper knitting. I knit those two pairs and I enjoyed that. So I'm anxious to see how yours turn out, Catherine. Sharon, I don't know if it's Sharon, if that's how you say it, or Sharon, but I'm going to say Sharon. Uh, she has three sweaters that she would like to fix. She was kind of a noob knitter when she did them, the first one, and she didn't do the short row shaping at the back. She did it at the side. And so there's this weird lump on the side and of one sweater, the neckline. And so she's wanting to unknit it and graft a new top to it like and so i don't know if you're planning on picking back because like if it was uh top down that would be really hard but maybe you're planning on cutting and you know running a a thread or a circular needle through the neckline to hold the stitches that you don't pull out, pull out the rest and then knit upward from there. Is that what you mean by grafting? Or are you planning on knitting a top and then like grafting the two together? I'm really curious how you're going to do it. There is some sweater and I said I was gonna look it up and I forgot to. Something I made that I needed to lengthen it, but it was a bottom up sweater and I wanted to lengthen the bottom, and so I cut the bottom. Oh, that was scary too. I ran a spare circular through it, caught all the stitches, pulled everything out underneath that, and that still took quite a bit of effort, even though I wasn't trying to like unpick the cast on, and I knit down and made it work. Anyway, I'm interested to know, Sherry, how are you going to um, work your neckline? And then also she was going to um, fix a sweater, possibly completely frog it and knit it over. It was a color work sweater and she was newer to knitting. And you know how your color work, you can get it just like you want it, but then if you use the same size needle and you move to the body, the body often looks a lot looser because Color work kind of tightens up, and then when you're not doing multiple colors and strands at once, everything can get kind of loose. So a lot of people will move to a smaller needle. When they say you're doing a color work yoke, they get past the color work, they move to a smaller needle. For me, I've just started learning, um, not just started, but what I try to keep in mind, I never do anything perfectly ever, is to, I knit sloppy. I feel so wrong when I do stranded knitting. It feels super sloppy, but usually the sloppier it feels, the better it looks. <laughs> and it blocks out really well because it's not puckered or tight. But I did knit something. I'm thinking it was Sunset Highway. And even though I kept that in mind, I had the same problem as you. The body just, I don't know. It just didn't match. And it was fingering weight, very thin yarn it just didn't it didn't 
have the same heft as the color work section, which had a lot of colors going and it just clung, clung hung weird on my body. So anyway, I'm interested to see if you're just going to re-knit the whole thing and uh, let us know what you're gonna do for sure. And use the hashtag recycle, re -knit, remake. And her third sweater was in superwash and it was a lace pattern and she just didn't realize how much it was going to block out with blocking. It became very big, but that loose fit, she actually likes it. Only problem is it's so long, it's like jammies, you know? So she just wants to undo the bottom hem and take a couple of repeats of the pattern out and then redo whatever the bottom is, ribbing or hem. Um, that sounds like a pretty easy fix, and it sounds like you're gonna have a very comfortable, wearable sweater. I tend to like a lot of ease in my sweaters too, and um, I don't know, I used to get really frustrated because everything would come out too big for me, but of course when I started knitting, very fitted sweaters, <laughs> very fitted chunky weight yarn sweaters were in style. Um, I just can't, the thought of that just, I don't know, it makes me feel too constricted now. So, Sharon, show us what you're making. Lynn probably won't join in, but she um, heard what I was asking in the last episode to brainstorm and come up with good pattern ideas. And she was thinking of Hohi Locatelli's super summer, super simple summer sweater. Let me show you guys what that looks like. It would be a great uh, stash buster or a great project to do with recycled yarns, especially if you didn't have enough of a color for an entire sweater. You could stripe with different recycled yarns or combine a recycled yarn with one that you just haven't used yet on the skein. And she even mentioned changing the texture for stripes, like doing a different stitch pattern for some of the stripes, which is a very neat idea. I love that. And you got me thinking, Lynn, um, you got me thinking about several. One was the Stash Dive Raglan that Summer Lee Design Company came out with. This was made to knit with a strand of worsted weight and a strand of sock held together. And if you want, you could use like three sock yarns or three strands of a sock yarn held together, whatever to match that weight, or you could combine a sport and a sock yarn, or a DK and a worse, a DK and a, you know, sport. Basically, the whole point is to kind of have random striping. It all kind of blurs together. And look at this um, image. I, I really love this sweater. It's very cool. It's almost space dyed. It almost looks like a space dyed sweater but that's all like stash diving. That's a good idea for recycling um, old scraps or various sweaters that might be similar lengths or they don't even have to be similar weights. You can um, combine in such a way that you get the weight you need. I thought of that one. Another one I had in my stash, cause I, I mean my stash, my pattern favorites is this color block sweater on the Lion Brand site. Um, what Lynn said about changing textures made me think of this. And this is a Lion Brand pattern. I'm sure it's probably free. And you see color changes. There's that raw deconstructed um, seams or the look of deconstructed seams. And then you have textural changes along with color changes. Another one is Annie Lepton or Boho Chic Fiber Co. Her Scrappy Crop, which is, I think made for bulky yarns. And so that's a great way to use bulky yarns. And you don't have to have, it's super bulky. You don't have to have a ton of them because it is cropped. And you can stripe any way you want. And she does have a little bit of, you know, use of pearl stitches and you know, garter here and there to kind of not only make it color striping, but textural striping too, which I like. That's kind of like that plaid sweater I made. Um, I like the effect of that. 
Here's another one that I've had in my favorites for a while under Stash Busters. So yes, this is great if you want to recycle, but also if you're just into using Stash, you might like these. And I link everything I talk about in my notes and on the blog post. So this is Regina Weiss's Scrappy Knit Shawl. And there's the same idea. You're striping your scraps. And really, you could probably just do knotted, you know, um, is it a Russian join? Those knots kind of like when you're making a magic cake or go ahead and make your magic cake. That would be a lot of fun. And then you just start knitting. I don't think these stripes, I don't think this shawl would look worse if the stripes stopped midway and changed color, as long as you vary where that's happening. And then of course there's fringe and it looks like the fringe comes off the color. Like you, you knit your stripe, you leave a little extra, you knit your stripe across and then you leave extra yarn for fringe, which I think is a very neat idea and maybe less ends to weave. So all of those, Lynn, you've made me think of those and I'm really glad you did because that's given me some ideas, if not for this make along for, you know, all of my mini scraps. When I was looking for those um, pom poms, I found my <laughs> Franken blanket uh, scraps and I've been saving six by six uh, blocked swatches from a bunch of sweaters over the years. I mean, a bunch. I mean, I'm seeing things in here. Okay, well, this is not six by six. I didn't have much of this yarn. I think these were for knitted shorts. Um, I didn't have much of the yarn, so I did a lazy swatch. But I started trying to do six by six, but on these, um, so that I could make a blanket with them. This was a Jane Richmond hat. I think I've given that away now. This was a different cardigan. Um, Isabel Kramer, you know, I mean, and some of these are, I, as long as they were sport to worsted weight, I would keep them. This is actually a summer type yarn. So you're seeing all sorts of, and they don't all look six by six, but they should block out to about that. And uh, if not, that might actually make the blanket even a little more homespun looking, which I might prefer. Yeah, I don't know what this even is. Oh, I did a Totoro. It was a sample for, you can't even see. It's a color work Totoro because I made a, a uh, sweater with Totoro. My little uh, bow tie. Katie designed that. So yes, I have uh, another, this is another thing that you can do with, that's the Everett Henley. I mean, there's just a bunch in here. 2010. Uh, these, this is another thing you can do with your scraps is just make swatches. You could do, uh, well, there's plenty of blanket motifs. Uh, Lion Brand had that traveling afghan, which I have yarn to do, like easy care yarn, and I've made like three, three or four squares for it. And then I got onto something else. But using your swatches, if you always do the same size and you block them out to the same size, it'll probably make a pretty good, it's, these are gonna be wild color combos. But I just think that would be a super memorable, um, look, here's the Eastwood that I'm going to be taking apart for this knit along, but I will always have this swatch in my little Franken blanket. Katie actually is one of the more devoted people who is trying to use just stash. Uh, of all the people I know on Instagram, uh, she has stuck with that. Like, I don't think she bought any yarn last year at all except to make something for someone else. So she was doing lots of little scrap projects and there were stockings and ornaments at one point. Um, 
I don't know if that was this year or last year, but lots of smaller knits and some cottony uh, summer weight knits over the last couple of years. I mean, she's really been using up stash. She's very dedicated about it. And uh, one thing she did have to possibly do for the recycle, re-knit, remake, make along, is t-shirts from different events, like running events and stuff that she could cut up into t-shirt yarn and make something. So Katie, what are you thinking of making? Are you wanting to crochet or knit something? I, I told you guys I was thinking about a rug, like not necessarily a bath mat, but like there's a bath mat in our upstairs bathroom, but then there's a place in front of the sink where, you know, a rug, a homespun rug would be kind of fun. I was thinking of crocheting like a spiral rug. Um, I linked in the show notes on the last episode a pinwheel type of rug. I think it was meant to be a blanket, but I would have made it as a rug. And it was knitted for a modern daily knitter, I think the first book. So another thing I thought of was baskets you know, like crocheted, stiff crocheted baskets for around your house. But then I thought about like, when I go to Target or someplace with my daughter, like a craft store, she's like, you don't need more baskets. You don't need more stuff. You know, she used to be my, the little devil on my shoulder that would say, yeah, you should get it. You should do it, do something for yourself. And so I'd be like, oh, I don't know, I don't know do it, do it. But she's become very minimalist and also very budget conscious as an adult. And she's like, you don't need more baskets. You don't need more stuff. And so I thought about the baskets and I thought baskets lead to stuff because you just end up putting stuff in it. And I have enough baskets. So here's what I'm thinking would be a good idea. I, I want to do this. I have mixtape yarn from wool in the gang to do one of these but i also think it would just be fun to do something like this I, there's probably more patterns like this but the milo bag to me it's like the perfect beach bag this is a wool in the gang pattern i don't know if it's free and it's very hard to tell like for instance it could look like that and so you can crochet your own strap and just use some fastenings, which I found fastenings like this actually in jewelry, cheap belts, um, uh, that's like used stuff from a thrift store, but you could also just, you know, go to Joanne. You know, mixed tape is basically like t-shirt yarn. So there's probably all sorts of market bags and beach type bags that t-shirt yarn would be great for, and it could stripe, you could, just kind of make a magic cake out of the t-shirt yarn because that's kind of already what t-shirt yarn is. There's knots in it. You could even work with the knots and let it be part of kind of a funky look. So that's what I'm thinking of doing with some of my t-shirt yarn. Or if I've got good enough like striping colors, I might knit a little spiral or crochet a spiral rug. I saw that Jane Richmond has testers working on a crochet rug right now. Um, I doubt it will be ready by the time I want to do that, but I could always do it later because we're always going to have t-shirt scraps. Pam used t-shirt yarn for a little rug or mat for her cat to lay on, which the cat doesn't lay on, of course. But uh, it worked and she enjoyed doing it. Um, I think it was a cow patch pattern from a creative bug class that she used. She said Erin Halverson also has info on her channel about this. I'm going to link that. I haven't had time to look that up yet, but I'm going to link it in the notes for you guys and I'm going to check that out. Also for um, recycling, like she has a cardigan she's just finished, but it's super scratchy. It's not that comfortable. And she found an Etsy pattern online by Fibers and Twigs that uses adult sweaters to make mittens. You even utilize the cuff for the mittens. Um, that same site, I believe, is where she got uh, the idea for, or a pattern for sewing a dog sweater out of a 
Goodwill sweater that she had bought, like an adult size Goodwill sweater. So those are really great ideas. I have that linked also in the show notes. Thank you for those ideas, Pam. And then she's also like 400 plus stitches into a Stephen West shawl and then realized it's just not a shape she thinks she'll use. It's just not the right shape of shawl for her. So she's frogged it back and is going to knit Elizabeth Smith's East Coast Swing. So you should include that in our make along, Pam. Uh, use the hashtag and I'd love to see how your progress comes along. So with my two sweaters, oh, and on the topic of finding something to do with recycled bits that aren't enough for a large accessory, like I'm really surprised I had enough yarn for both this and a very fitted hat. That is unusual though, but this is a little freebie that I have on my um, Ravelry. There's a link to it. Um, it's just, I called it the striped cowl and it's, you could do it with multiple colors. It doesn't have to just be three and it's just a tube and, and it's not even um, neat. Uh, color changes like I didn't worry about the jog at all this was all just about fun and I really don't think that's a problem plus it's turned to the inside so I, I didn't care I did try to hide the jog on the stockinette portion but anyway it's like a free knit pattern I did this in worsted weight or maybe DK, I can't remember what this yarn is. Then I did one in bulky and it's really big. Oh my gosh, it's so warm though when it's cold outside. And it's just alternating of, uh, you know, garter and stockinette. And uh, I don't know, it's a lot of fun to make. It's a, a thing to do stuff like this, like we were showing the striped shawls and things, it's that kind of thing. And I mean, I still use it. And I don't feel bad about um, when I use recycle things, for some reason in my mind, you know, I didn't pay an arm and a leg for this yarn. I feel like, I don't know, super comfortable using them all the time. I should feel that way about everything, but sorry, I don't. Um, if you've ever lived feast or famine, <laughs> you might be like me and have a little trouble with um, junking up really expensive things. So these uh, are the sweaters that I'm looking at doing something with. Now, I thought I would make mittens out of this, but Catherine made a really good point. First of all, these are the exact colors of the pillows in my upstairs uh, office where I sometimes shoot these videos and she noticed that behind me and if it were a pillow I would see it all the time if it's mittens I'm gonna see it once a year so I was just gonna I'm just gonna stuff this pillow here inside of it and just kind of get an idea for the size of pillow this could make and how I would want to even do that I am not good at sewing I don't know a lot about it uh, I've never used my machine. <laughs> I have a sewing machine, I don't use it. I could try being a little fancier and um, seaming up into the raglan area and then the whole pillow, and that's just if I want to use like a 20 by 20 pillow size, the whole pillow would be striped. So it would be seamed up and uh, I could make an envelope closure with buttons or I could just make a sleeve. So what do you guys recommend? I don't sew. So those of you who do, just take a look at this shaping. There's this little um, area that's kind of increases for shaping there. But like I said, this increase here is mirrored by the increase down here. So what do you guys suggest for making this as foolproof as possible for a pillow cover? Give me some ideas. 
I know I sound kind of pitiful. Okay, so here's the Eastwood. This is the one that you guys have encouraged me to rip back because this is a really beautiful green yarn. And I was thinking, I definitely have enough yarn here. This sweater does not fit me. It was fitted when I knit it. And I probably knit too small a size because I often just lose sight of my gauge and also would skimp on yarn. But I could make a vest out of this and it could be a generous sized vest. It doesn't have to be, and it could be color blocked and striped because there's a lot of striped yarn here. Maybe enough for a vest by itself, but definitely with this cobblestone tweed. So I'm just looking for patterns right now and picking this apart won't be too bad. Um, look at my little mini pockets. Um, this shouldn't be too bad to pick apart. I mean, I made it, I still have the pattern. I know how I put it together, so. I've decided to do a tedious, very tedious picking apart project. I still haven't found that skirt that I showed you in the last episode to pick it back to re-knit, but I'm sure it'll turn up. And I did find the yarn for the plaid sweater if I choose to fix it. I can't believe how much I accomplished this week. I think it's because my sister was here and we just sat and talked and talked and talked for hours and I just was knitting away while we talked. So Lisa was saying, okay, Lisa remembers that Fildar vest that I showed you that I wanted to unknit that frog the skirt and use that slub cotton for that Fildar vest. Not sure it's the best project for that cotton, but I definitely wanna make that vest. Lisa has that issue and remembers that vest. And Lisa, you should make it. I'm going to make it one day. It has to happen. And I love that it's an older pattern. Uh, I, once in a while I go and I look through my favorites from way back when on Ravelry and I'm like, why have I not done this? And so much of it, I mean, there's some new things that are very similar and here there's this old pattern. Sometimes I own the pattern and I haven't made it. And uh, I don't know, sometimes it's nice to step back from patterns that are creating a big stir online and just do your own thing. And Lisa was saying that she kind of misses that creative energy that before there were patterns available for everything, just having to figure out how to do something on her own. So during the pandemic, she frogged a bunch of sweaters. You know, she just took stock of what she really likes in a sweater, what fit she likes, why she doesn't wear them. And she frogged them all back to yarn. So Lisa has been taking these different yarns from sweaters she's unraveled, and she's been excited to try using them in different ways and for projects she would actually wear, actually use. So like maybe different sock projects or taking two different weights of yarn and holding them together to make the correct weight or marling two different colors together. And that's been like using her creativity in a way she hadn't been doing for a while. Like Lisa was like me, um, like Katie said, she also has felt like we got really dependent upon patterns and other people with current hashtag trends and things kind of guiding what we're interested in and what we make rather than just, I don't know, uh, using what we have or feeling a void, like something we just really want and then just figure it out on our own. And I get that often things we figure out on our own can seem hideous or they can fail, but there's also a pride in doing that. And um, I just think new pathways are created in our brains when we do that. It's really good for us. Um, I'm gonna show you my first thing to ever make. The first thing I ever made was a purse. I knitted a purse. I just knitted a stockinette skirt rectangle and then I folded it in half. I sewed up the sides with thread or maybe yarn and I even instead of having it be straight like this I kind of made it have more of a a-line shape 
by, I don't know, pinching in more of the fabric as I sewed it up toward the top. And then I attached wooden handles I got at Joanne. It was super simple. I didn't even know how to sew. I don't know how to do anything, but I was so proud of that project and it brought me great joy. Now, I have since made things that were a lot more technical, a lot more difficult. I don't use that purse anymore, but it did something for me. It was really good for me to do that. Look, here's a picture of it. I later added a little rosette. I also made out of like Lion Brand homespun. This is a uh, Lion Brand yarns of yore. So th that's kind of what you're doing, Lisa. You're getting in touch with that um, do-it-yourself kind of attitude. And Katie's also been doing that. She's just been pulling away from following hashtags and letting like Instagram and social media kind of help her choose her fabric with this pattern and instead has been looking in her stash and seeing what can she make work with patterns she has. You know, you confessed, Katie, that you went to Yield Joann's. I, I did a Lion Brand Yarns of Yore uh, shopping myself. I saw Claire McLean's Dibioski sweater. Have you seen it? Um, you know that movie, Don't Look Up? Yeah, it's okay. Um, I like David Sirota. I like reading his stuff, but I, I kind of love the movie. Um, it's it's a writing thing. It's not really about the message, but this character, I think I'm saying it right, Dibioski. Um, this is the sweater she wore in the movie, and lots of people have a hashtag. Don't look. This is a hashtag I'm following. Don't look up sweater. I think it's so creative though, they just watched the movie and they've just charted their own sweater and made their own version of it. And a lot of them look very similar to this and that's what Claire's, Claire McLean came out with a pattern for free on Ravelry and I'll link it for something that looks just very much like this sweater. And this sweater is a fuzzy sweater so it's got mohair held throughout. Um, but a lot of people have knit Claire's pattern and they've done different versions and some have mohair, some don't. I don't think this one has mohair. It's just really great. This is on the pattern page. I, I saw one that was uh, had a lot of positive ease and was super luxurious looking online. But anyway, I, I, was, I saw that and I thought, oh, I bet I could do that in Woolies yarn. I have a lot of Lion Brand bits and pieces of woolies. I bet I could do it. And I do have some bits and pieces, but none of them like the colors look great together. I also had some um, mohair in my stash. And so I thought, okay, Lion Brand's always doing 35% off. And then I had reward points. And so I did a <clears throat> yield Lion Brand uh, shopping. And anyway, I came up with to do the main color, umber in wool ease, and then something, I don't know what this is. This is like a, it's not navy, but it's a, a royal kind of blue. And then this pink has the three colors for the sweater. So I have some Aloft, they don't even make this anymore. This is a mongoose, I think is the colorway. It's not quite the same, but I think it'll be fine held together. This may look hideous. Um, then I have, uh, Nip Picks had their Aloft hand paints on sale, and I got a ball of each of these to go with those. So this is London, and this one is Soul Hand Paint. Yeah, Soul and London. So they're city names, yeah. And then this one was Mongo. So here we go. Don't know if this will look good. It might look bad. And holding mohair silk blend with kitty. No. 
No. I might regret holding this with a such a wool nylon blend as Woolies, but we'll see. I mean, and so really not much of this was stash. Most of it is not, but you know, reward points. I did it. But in general, I am trying to use stash more. Um, I do love though the idea of seeing something in a movie and trying to make it happen. A long time ago, I saw on Ravelry, uh, in the closer, Brenda Lee always wore this, especially when she was needing like some sort of comfort and nurturance, she would wear this brown lace sweater. I think it was like a Ralph Lauren sweater or something. Uh, a Raveler studied it closely and came up with a version of it that looks very much like it and I always thought I want to knit that Brenda Lee sweater sometime. I actually have a bunch of screenshots I've taken of sweaters from different TV shows from the 80s and 90s and um, I keep saying one of these days I'm gonna knit some of those TV knits and that might be a fun thing for us to do in the future uh, if you guys like just want to do it with me because I think that's really good for our creativity to not use a pattern, right? And to just make it happen. Now I am showing you Claire McLean's pattern and I'm gonna link it in the notes, it's free. And I'll use her pattern. I like that she did that. But it is uh, also an inspiration for us when we see something thinking, I can do that, I wanna make that happen without quite being so pattern dependent like Catherine was talking about last time. So let me show you <clears throat> what the giveaway is going to be. Anna just so kindly donated some really nice things. This, Anna isn't selling anything. This isn't a promotion. She just collected some things and wanted to share it and she wanted a viewer of the podcast to have it. She actually told me I could keep it all if I wanted, but I didn't. I did keep some Crystal Palace yarn, but of the two colorway she sent, this was my favorite and I wanted you guys to have it because I thought it was just so beautiful. It is a green colorway with bits of blue undertones in it. And it's the Kid Merino, which is, I don't know, 28% um, mohair, 28 wool and 44 nylon. And I just think this is, such a beautiful color. This is called Forest Tones. That's the color. So it's 240 yards per ball, 10 balls. So that is plenty to make, um, to hold it along with a fingering weight or sport or worsted weight yarn to make a full sweater that's mohair or use it on its own or hold it with something and make accessories. But I love that this is actually an amount you could use for a sweater. I think finding silk mohair for a sweater is daunting. That's why, um, <laughs> that's why for that uh, movie lookalike sweater I was talking about, the bulk of the mohair I'm using, it's old stash. Uh, I wouldn't have done it otherwise. I just, the only, I got two discount balls of this. It's just really kind of expensive for a sweater. This is enough for a sweater, possibly with some ease. Uh, I just think it's so pretty. And then along with that, there is a project bag. And it's, uh, it could be shawl size, definitely sock size, but maybe shawl size. And it's got the little handle. It's like a box bag. And inside you find a handmade shawl pin, recycled glass, and a handmade pin with a glass bead on the end. I think that's so pretty. And she also included some carbons, double point needles. Earlier I was saying that I have trouble using metal, all metal needles like um, Addie's. I am a loose knitter and they don't have enough grip and I find that my gauge gets looser and looser. Then I overcompensate sometimes and knit too tight. I use carbons all the time. I love uh, wooden needles and carbons 
work the very best for my knitting style. And so she has double points in size three, four, five, and seven. The sevens are kind of extra long, which these are like the main sizes I would probably use for making hats and sleeves and things. Uh, it's just so generous. Thank you so much, Anna. So if you would like to be entered into this giveaway, you just have to recycle something with us online. Now make it a current project, not something you already did a long time ago and you just share a recent picture of. Um, show, especially if you can show us the befores, that would be great. Uh, like I showed you my yarn that I had recycled and then as I'm working on the project, every time you post a photo of your progress on one or more projects you do in the month of March for Recycle, Reknit, Remake, you get an entry for the giveaway. So the more photos you post, the more you interact, the more chances you have. That's a really great prize. Um, and I'm excited to finally be giving it away. I've been holding it too long. Thank you, Anna, for that. Um, so Amanda asked if we were gonna do any more videos showing things around our house. I, I think we will. I kind of just need help doing that. And also, I don't know about you guys, but my home is never like photo ready everywhere. I try to keep the main areas clean, the bathrooms, but like our bedrooms are a wreck. <laughs> I make my bed and that's about it. We have like stacks of books and papers on the chairs and the desk is covered and all sorts of, I don't know, computer and work stuff. So I will do that, but just as I get around to showing things or um, <laughs> straightening areas up, we still have some projects that we have yet to do. And then like you were asking Amanda about the yard, um, it's not looking so great right now. A lot of things have died off for the winter and all my plants are under an arbor we made and enclosed for it, uh, while it's freezing still but I'll be taking those out soon and I want to show you guys the arbor in the patio, things like that, that we've done for sure. I like showing DIYs around my house because I think it's really in keeping with the ethos of my blog and this channel. We, um, we do things kind of on the cheap, things that would maybe be out of reach for us financially, we make them more attainable by doing it ourselves. Uh, there's some creative creativity involved, right? And then our personal spin on things. I also like the idea of inviting you all into my home, but if I'm honest, I'm a little like shy about um, like showing my home. Do you know what I mean? I just feel um, like I have no problem showing like things I make, but I feel a little weird showing things I have. Uh, so maybe it's just I'm mindful right now about the housing situation all over the country and especially where I live. It just, anyway, I, um, I wanted to mention to you guys, like a lot of people are talking about displaced people in the Ukraine and other places. I follow a group uh, online called We Welcome Refugees and they advocate for our country taking in refugees from other places. And so right now they are for Ukrainians, but also Afghans and Syrian refugees. And I really like what they're about and I just like keeping up with them and some of the people who head the group. So I, I'm gonna have a link here for you to see, but uh, I don't know, maybe you have thoughts on this. I know Lori, you said that the housing market is really discouraging for people where you live now. And I am just so conscious of it because I know people who were on track to own their own home. And now they're just like, after a year, you know, the pandemic and then weird housing market things, they're just like, it's never gonna happen, which isn't necessarily true for them, but I get their discouragement. Uh, do you guys have any uh, organizations that you are kind of keep track of or donate to that help in that? I know I've 
shared some on Instagram before and others of you have in make-alongs like the Love Your Neighbor make-along. But uh, there was a group a while back that I shared in a link, somebody or somebody shared with me, I, I don't remember which, and they kind of coach you into taking people into your home. And a lot of people are opening their Airbnb property up to other families and uh, refugees. I, I think that's I think that's wonderful. That's the ultimate goal to me. But, um, so I will be showing like DIYs here and there and all. I just sometimes feel, I don't know, I'm just really mindful of that, I guess. And I get it. Do you hear Ella? Oh, there she is, yeah. Ugh. She's so bad. What kind of, I was going to ask you, what kind of uh, DIYs do you like to watch or do you watch different DIY home decor remodeling channels on YouTube? I'm not fishing for material for this channel because I am not that. I have thought of some really great home DIY spoofs. Sorry. That's Wubba. Come here. Give it. I have literally have nowhere to throw this. She's gonna pull the camera over. <sighs> I'm gonna have to go. So that's my question. Do you like to watch YouTube DIYs? Mm. What DIY channels do you watch? And um, what types of videos do you like to watch? Or do they all drive you crazy? Bye. Keep using the hashtag. Recycle, re-knit, remake. Recycle, re-knit, remake. Come on. Get it. That wasn't very exciting. Oh my gosh. Find your places. Find your places. Somewhere. No. Oh my goodness, my cat is snoring. Can you know? Driving me crazy no. going in and out. Oh. And reuse. No. No. Because of your. Do you watch, do you watch different DIY no. home decor remodeling channels on? YouTube. I'm not fishing for material for this no. channel because I am no with no kitty. No. No. Michael, we hit. We make. I'm gonna have to do all this over again, aren't I? No.